Okay, so for this fun little paper spraying session today, I've got this kitty litter tub I bought at Walmart. I really wanted this because I wanted something with really deep sides that I could one, wash, and two, just spray, spray, spray without having to worry about it. So I use this for all matters messy with paper staining. They work great. So now I've got these gray pages from this Paper Studio Boho Sheet Kit right here. And I get this at Hobby Lobby and I always wait for it to go half off. Paper Studio stuff always goes half off. You just might have to wait a week or two. And then these are all cut down to eight and a half by 11. And then the sprays I'm gonna use, I have a mix and you know, just pick whatever color combo you think you're gonna like and go for it. Uh, this is Lindy's Stamp Gang Moon Shadow Mist Smoky Sapphire. This color is stunning. These um, Lindy's are amazing sprays. They really are. And then I've got this other Lindy's Stamp Gang. This is a Starburst and it's Whale Watch Blue. Then I'm going to be using some Tim Holtz Distress Spray Stain Brushed Pewter. And then I've got Perfect Pearls Heirloom Gold here, Mists. And then these are some homemade, this is just, um, I have some kids liquid watercolor and I took about this much watercolor and then filled the rest with water. So I've got black, don't know how strong it is, haven't really used it yet. And then I've got blue. So we're going to go ahead and use those today. And then the idea here, oh, and also I've got my coffee. This is instant coffee. Couldn't tell you the ratio. I always just throw it together and then if I think the color looks good, I leave it. This batch actually is a little light, but it's good enough. I always mix instant coffee. So my plan here is, and I want to have this extra coffee. And the reason why is because you want your pages pretty wet at first. You want to be able to get these other sprays to have um, room to move around because some of them are really concentrated and you can get big blobs of color when you do some of these sprays. So if you've got your page a little wet, it does help, see what I mean, to dissipate some of the color. So this nozzle is clogged. That's why it's doing that, but it'll be just beautiful. Here's the perfect example of why I want to use that coffee. Here's this Whale Watch Blue. And I'm just doing a few, getting it nice and juicy, getting some color on here. You can just take the nozzle up, spout out and spatter it to get some, add some more interest. Let's see how strong this is real quick. This is the uh, black and it's not very but it may just come out perfect. I'm gonna go for it quite a bit. Now I've got this page nice and juicy and my plan is to just take another sheet and go face down so that the blank ends the <laughs> blah blah go face down so that the blank sides are together and then just leave this and take another one and go up. So you're gonna have bleed and all that fun stuff. You can spray these too if you want. I'm just doing it this way. Take my coffee. You can use water if you don't want the color of coffee in certain coffee, um, in certain color palettes, I mean. So you have plenty of options, you know? I got that nice and wet. Let's add some black to this. And then I really wanted to do this uh, smoky sapphire. Now, a lot of times these nozzles get clogged. Oh, good. Yay, glad it didn't happen. Okay, and then let's throw some blue in here. This is just the blue watercolor homemade mix. 
I like to just have them really wet and then I'm going to just keep going and going, which I of course won't film. And then I'm going to set this whole kitty litter container aside and I'm going to walk away for at least four days because it's going to take at least that long to dry these. So this is one of those things, the way I do it, that does require some patience, but I do so many projects that to just do this and get it going, I can move on to other stuff. So if you have stuff you want to do, push that back long enough to do your papers and then spray them real quick and get them out of the way and then you can move on and you don't have to be patient because you're busy working on other stuff. <laughs> That's how I do it anyway, and it seems to work pretty well. That heirloom gold is pretty. I'm not sure the light. I've got a lot of glare from my studio lights, I see. So this is really going to tell the tale when it's all dry. I think it's going to be so fun. Now I have other color combos. So I'm also going to do, off camera of course, I'm just going to do some plain old printer paper. And then these are all from the Tattered and Worn paper kit. I will grab it and show you that one too. But I'm going to do all these too. So I'm just going to spatter them with coffee and browns and greens and whatever my heart feels like doing at the moment. Let me grab that. Okay, here's that other paper. This is called Tattered and Ward. And I said before, I really like this paper because you get all these different color families and prints. It's a great paper kit. And then it goes half off, just like the Boho Chic does every about every two to three weeks, give or take. So you can stock up on a lot of paper in a hurry. And then while it's not on sale, you have plenty to work with and plenty of time to get more. Okay, so I'm just going to keep going and I'll be back to show you these all dry. Okay, so I just got all the gray papers sprayed and it went quick. It was like less than 10 minutes to do that whole little batch. Now, I, I got to think it as I was doing that. I'm going to do some just plain copy, plain old printer paper. And I want to throw some stencils in, too, on the plain ones. So this is a Dilution stencil, I'm pretty sure. And I got this at Michael's a long time ago. These three are Patty Tolly Parish stencils. And you can get these at iStencils.com. She has an amazing selection. And I don't have any yet, but Robin McClendon just came out with a bunch of uh, scripting, intuitive scripting stencils, and they're available at iStencils.com as well. Now, the, this brick one I got at Michael's, these are hand cut. I made these a long time ago and then this one I got at the flea market from a private seller he was selling a bunch of uh, crafting supplies so that's where the this one came from the whole point is is to just grab what you love and put some between the pages and then I will show you them all dry here's just another quick little way to get some nice little coffee stained scrapbook um, journal pages too. Just give it a squirt with your bottle and do different pressures and different speeds on your nozzle and you can get different size drops. Then I just put two together and then design side back to back and then just continue on. And then these will dry a lot faster than the other ones that are totally sprayed soaking wet. So this, I like to do a whole bunch of them all at once and then they're all ready to go. 
Okay, so here's these pages that I coffee stained out of the scrapbook papers and it they come out quite fun as you can see. Some of them are quite wrinkled and I haven't ironed them and I don't think I'm going to. I'm in kind of a time crunch to get these journals put together. So they're probably going to be very shabby shabby journal pages which is okay with me now all of these some of them you can't see the coffee staining on the back very well just because the prints of some of the papers can be pretty dark and then other sheets really came out really nice and grungy like this one here so you get a wide variety of papers doing it this way and i think it's a really quick way to get a bunch of papers now for the other side let me give you a closer look of that at this side now um some of them came out like this some of them came out spattered some of them came out completely covered and another fun thing you can do with these pages like this one just got a border but I like it because it breaks up the starkness of the white page it just gives it some character and um, something you can do too is you can really soak these completely through with your coffee spray and then um, once you once they're dry you can come back in and just spatter away on these two and restack them again and get more spatter i would do that to this batch but i'm not going to take the time because i don't have it for this batch but in my coffee staining tutorial where i put all the pages in a bath i do spatter them it's very easy just take an old brush Put it in your coffee mix and spatter away. Now these pages look really nice with the spatter on them because this is for the most part covered in coffee right here. So you can really add some extra character if you have the time. So those are all the coffee stained stack that I did. Now let's take a look at the sprayed pages. I think I did probably way too many in this stack. I made this stack gigantic because I needed all of this paper. So um, in hindsight, I would probably do maybe 10 to 15 sheets and then start a new stack and just have a few stacks going at once. Um, I got a lot of beautiful shimmer here sure you can see that this this image is from that handmade stencil of course and i'm only going to show you a few of these some of them got really poor um creased quite a bit so i'm gonna run an iron over these ones here just because i don't think i can get away from it there's a lot of shimmer in here and i don't know that the camera is going to pick it up as strong as it is but I got a lot of this beautiful little bubbling sorry about that there goes my phone so you can get a lot of this really fun bubbling when you stack just because air of course gets caught in between the page and the whatever you're spraying so I got some interesting you know fun little markings and I did a stack of scrapbook paper and then I also added into this mix just plain printer paper because I needed both. This has some really lovely shimmer on it and a lot of bubbles and then there's the scrapbook paper on the back. It's really fun to get a bunch of scrapbook paper and then just alter it. That way you've got front and back and you only have to really worry about one side of the paper. I'm trying to get the best angle here. There, that's pretty good. So these are quite subtle yet beautiful. I love all that bubbling and then it's like they're bubbles of shimmer paper because I used the Lindy's. The Lindy's gives you such nice shimmer. <laughs> but they these came out so much more subtly than I expected them to come out. So, you know, you just get a grab bag, really a grab bag. And this looks like the mirror image of the one I was showing you before. And another thing about these pages, look at that. The spray 
will come off on your hands. I'm not thrilled with that. I think I would rather use, um, just make some homemade watercolor squirt bottles, something like that. But these shimmer sprays really do rub off, so I would never put this in my printer after I shimmer sprayed it. I, if I wanted to like print an eco dye on here, I would just go ahead and do the printing first, of course, and then the shimmer, you get it, you know. Sometimes I over explain. So this is a real pale ghost image of one of Patty Tolly Parrish's stencils on this side, and then my brick stencil on this side. And then here's my brick. I was really kind of, I have to say, a bit disappointed in these. I expected a little bit more pizzazz out of this batch of paper, but you get what you get. I'm happy with these in the regard that I got some markings on all these pages, but disappointed because I just had higher expectations. So, and I think that the key to that is just, I mean, these are fine. They're gonna work great for journaling because you can put cards and tags and all kinds of stuff on top of these in addition to actually being able to journal on these pages. So they're really great for what I made them for. But um, I would make smaller stacks if you want more pizzazz and, you know, dilutions. There's a lot of sprays on the market and then you can make your own watercolor sprays. You can make your own food coloring sprays. There's lots of options where you're not going to wear your paper on your hands. And I, I don't like this, you know, I want to be able to spray something on the page and I really want it to stay on the page. So, you know, a few issues with doing it this way that I came across and I like sharing some of my so-called fails with you guys because I think that I like to, I think it takes some of the legwork out of it for you. So sometimes, you know, I don't show you all the greatest of great, perfect, immaculate stuff, but at least um, I go through and tell you, hey, here's where I went wrong, here's what I think went wrong, and then you can do it and avoid it. So here's a, a, that bubble stencil. Eh, you know, they have some interesting markings, and that's really what I was after here. So not a lot of pizzazz for my taste. Here's a great page that I'd stacked them all on the grate because um, when you put them in the kitty litter, the problem with that is once I spray my papers, I take them up to this table. I have my coffee staining table and I take them up and out of that kitty litter container because you need air to get to all sides. So then I just thin out the stacks and I, I make mini stacks on the table. So um, in hindsight, I will just start and finish with smaller stacks to begin with on the next batch. So really nothing too spectacular to write home about here. I'm trying to get to some of this uh, scrapbook paper. Here we go. So here's the scrapbook paper and it's fun because you get end up with some shimmer and some nice little markings and it just ages your papers nicely to do this. But really, you know, I mean, I can see it better than the cameras picking it up. I'm sure they are all shimmery, which is nice because it makes the grunge look a little bit more interesting. But eh, you know, I just feel eh about this set. And that's okay, that's okay. You know, part of being an artist is have an artist block every now and then and not always having everything, you know, go the way I want it to. And it's really frustrating in the moment, but it's also, rewarding in its own way because you learn so much. Here's some fun little pages. This scrapbook paper is really cute. Got some really cute papers in it. Some fun 
different papers that you can put together. I really am a big fan of gray, so when I saw this uh, scrapbook paper, this gray kit, I was really happy. And then I got a lot of pages with just a lot of the little bubbles on here. So not a whole lot, not much to write home about here on this one. But, you know, give it a shot and just make your stacks smaller. This is something I can tell you that will serve you well in the future. I have a tendency to get in a hurry. And sometimes I will get rebellious <laughs> against my own artwork. I know that sounds weird, but, and you could probably relate. I get in a hurry, I get too many projects going at once, and then I get exhausted from it. I just like get too much happening at once. And then I end up not getting the results I want because I didn't give it the attention that it deserved. So I definitely run into that quite a bit. But at the same time, you know, it's a balancing act between you know, how much time do I want to spend on sprayed papers and how much time do I have to spend on them? But I will say this, make your stacks smaller. The coffees all came out fine. I would have liked to see a little bit more on some of them, but these are okay with me. They really are because they're going to get folded in half. So when you look at this from the perspective of Okay, here's my journal page, and then you're only seeing half of this at a time. They become much more interesting as a journal page. So these I'm totally happy with. But there's my little tips for that. Just give your artwork the respect and attention it deserves. You can go fast, you know. I do, and I'm not going to stop doing that because I like to produce a lot. So, um... There you go, you know, tips, tricks, fails, all that good stuff. If you haven't subscribed, please don't let this deter you. <laughs> go ahead and click that subscribe button and hit the bell notification because um, I'm doing, I'm just beginning now to do the altered canvas excavation and that I'm not doing a set number of digs because in in an excavation I will have a, a number of digs in that excavation and this one I'm leaving open-ended because um, it's one of those excavations that you can just keep digging up treasure. So that's coming up soon. All these finished journals I'm going to show you when they're all done. That'll be coming up. So stay tuned and have a great day. Thanks for stopping by.